Okay, hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed uh, lunch. So I hope this time, unlike for the keynote this morning, I hope I won't have any uh, technical issues with the uh, micro, the, you know, speakers or Wi-Fi or whatever. Um, so today we'll be speaking about how Google uh, handles billions, li billions of lines of code in a single repository. Um, that might seem a little bit scary. Uh, so there are some downsides as well, but there are some advantages uh, to this, and we'll have a look at both aspects. I'm Guillaume Laforge. I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud Platform. Uh, I joined Google last June, so it's still uh, fairly new. And although I'm not a developer working on that big, huge code base, uh, every engineer, every software engineer, uh, goes through the... Um, We've got two weeks of training um, to get to know the, the tooling that we have inside, uh, how the processes we are following, um, etc. And it's a, it's a very nice process uh, to onboard uh, Google developers um, and software engineers. Uh, I'll, it's a bit unusual, but I'll start with references. Uh, because this uh, presentation is actually uh, uh, one uh, that is based on another pres presentation which was given by Rachel Pot Potvin. Potvin, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, so you can watch uh, her video. She's um, an engineering uh, manager at Google and she's working on the, uh, all, the, all the tooling and infrastructure uh, that is underlying this uh, huge uh, mono repository. And there were uh, two interesting articles. So there's a, a paper that has been published, which goes uh, into uh, some more depth into the details of how things uh, are working. And there was also a shorter uh, article on Wired, uh, which is a great one to read. If you just want to, to read one thing, uh, this is the one you should be reading. Uh, so I'll publish the slides uh, on Twitter later on. So if you want to find the links again, uh, they will be available. So just look at my Twitter feed and uh, you'll find that out. So uh, first I'm going to give you a little idea of scale, uh, the scale of that big, huge mono repository. Um, so the figures are, at least the public known figures are from 2015, so uh, the figures you're going to see are not the, the, the very latest uh, figures, so the figures might be bigger now. Uh, but I didn't want to go through the process of uh, asking if I can speak about new figures, so imagine even bigger figures than this. So there are one billion files uh, in this single uh, repository. Uh, in, uh, among those files, so it's not just source files, right? So they are also, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, HTML or text files or whatever. Uh, but the, the real uh, source files, there are 9 million source files. There are in total more than 2 billion lines of code across all the languages that we uh, use. Uh, 35 million commits uh, in total since the beginning. Uh, 86 terabytes of content, that's pretty huge. And um, there are about 45,000 commits per day, okay? <laughs> so it's not, um, you know, your small um, side project, obviously. And if you look at, um, th there's really an exponential growth in terms of uh, the number of accumulated change uh, uh, coming up to the, to, to the repository. And um, so we, we have about 25,000, so I think it's a bit more now, uh, 55,000 uh, Googlers in dozens of offices around the world who are actually committing to that uh, repository. Also something I forgot to mention is that, uh, the, so this is all, like let's say uh, the Gmail source code is there. Uh, the, uh, um, the source code for uh, the, the, the machine learning APIs that we're using, that I demonstrated this morning, uh, they are also there. So there are a couple of things which are not there, however. That's uh, Google Chrome, uh, because the, the Chromium project is uh, worked on outside as an open source project. 
uh, or things like TensorFlow, which is done also outside, and uh, Android, Android, because we work with partners, etc. But otherwise, the rest uh, is there in that big repository. And an engineer like me, uh, I can go and look at the source code of Gmail anytime, you know. So, okay, how is it working? And I, you know, if I'm curious, I have the, the ability to do that. So it's pretty open, which is very, very nice. <coughs> There are about, uh, so there are peaks in terms of uh, usage of that, that repository. And uh, the, I don't know exactly at what time of the day is the peak hour, but there are up to uh, 80, uh, uh, 800,000 uh, queries per second at, at peak hours when people, you know, hammer, uh, commit, and look, browse the code, etc. cetera. Uh, 50,000 commits. Uh, by humans per workday, and I'm going to come back to that because we also have robots who are actually committing code. That's interesting. Uh, 30,000 commits uh, yeah, by uh, the automated systems uh, because we, we've got also tons of tools uh, which are uh, handling uh, the code base, uh, or tools which are able to do refactorings, etc. I'll say a few words about that later on. So it's interesting to see that uh, only a third uh, of the, the commits are actual, actually made by uh, humans. And just to give some perspective, if you look at the Linux kernel, that's about 15 uh, million lines of code in 40,000 files. Uh, the Google repository, that's also, let's say, 15 million lines of code in instead 250,000 files, but changed per week. It's not the, the whole thing, that's really just per week. And two billion slides of code in nine minutes was fine, but that, I already mentioned that figure. So the Google systems and workflows. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you work uh, on your uh, environment, or let's say with a. You can also work in a web uh, front end, uh, ninety in the in the cloud. So using the, the, the user workspace to the, to the repository, then you write some code, new feature, etc. Uh, the code is always reviewed. Uh, you cannot commit anything that is uh, not reviewed. Uh, and then you actually commit. Um, so they are both, uh, in terms of code review, both checks which are done just by humans. OK, this one uh, looks good to me, etc. Or you should refactor this or that. Uh, but there are also tons of automated checks uh, which are done. The thing which is, so we have pre, post, comic uh, checks, etc. But the thing which is, which is really interesting, because uh, behind that repository, it's not just about the repository, but it's also about all the, all the tools, browsing, uh, um, all the, all the um, test infrastructure. There's also the, uh, the CI servers that we have uh, internally. And if ever, since everybody's working on the same code base, you could change something. If it gets reviewed somehow, uh, that could impact other projects. And uh, if you make a small change, which doesn't seem to be you know, anything really critical for, for, for you, but it might have an impact elsewhere. And somehow, uh, you can wreak havoc uh, if a commit starts breaking something, there's a chain reaction, and you could uh, break everybody's build throughout the company. And there's a, an auto rollback feature, which uh, automatically, uh, so if it notices that all tons and tons of tests are failing, tons of builds are actually failing, whoa, well, this commit is the culprit, let's auto roll back this stuff. Because, I mean, the guy might have, so hopefully he hasn't done that, but uh, a guy might have committed something, you know, Friday evening, of course. And then uh, he goes into uh, uh, his weekend or vacations or whatever. And then everybody is screwed uh, because of, of the change. So there's some mechanisms for auto rollback if uh, we notice that there's, uh, if the machines and builds and so on notice that there are breakage. Um, <clears throat> so the, the Google sources are, uh, well, in a tool called Piper. Uh, it was based on Perforce, uh, but it kind of outgrew that. Uh, and uh, it's actually based on the, uh, the, the Google infrastructure. So even that inside Google, uh, it's also based on our cloud and data centers, etc. 10 data centers around the world replicated so that we don't lose a single line of code. And uh, we've got uh, 
Kitsi. I'm not sure it should be really pronounced. I will always see it written, but I never know how to, to say it. Uh, so this is our um, the, the cloud-based storage uh, which underpins this and which also offers a kind of local view of the file system of the of the of the sources because you never really I mean you're, you're not going to check out and clone the repository, right? Uh, because I don't think you've got the terabytes uh, of, of, of disks for that. So there's a kind of a view on top of the, the overall file system um, and repository. And uh, yeah, what's in, as, I, as I said earlier, what's interesting is that anybody is able to look at a, a particular uh, project, source file, etc. So that's pretty, pretty cool when you're an engineer. In addition to that, uh, we have other tools uh, like Critique, uh, which does code re for, for code reviews, uh, code search. So when I want to see okay where this code is being used, etc., I can use that. Tools for static analysis, uh, pre post uh, pre submit checks. Uh, tap. This is our testing uh, stuff that I mentioned, which does the auto rollback if too many tests uh, actually fail. And Rosie, that's uh, um, refactorings across the whole repository. Uh, th this is uh, like, you know, within your IDE, but it's for the, the whole repository. Uh, is, so if something is used across all repository, uh, all, um, all projects, it's able to do the refactoring uh, at that scale. And uh, so w what makes um, a monolithic uh, model? Uh, that's really the fact that uh, there's this uh, single repository for, every, for everything, but also the fact we work from the trunk. So everybody works on the trunk, on, on, on the master. So there's just branches for releases, and sometimes we can cherry pick some changes, but otherwise everybody is working on the trunk. So there are some advantages, uh, so I'm gonna show them uh, here. So there's a single source of truth, uh, so you always know which is the right version of a file, so you're not going to think, okay, no, this was in version X or in this branch, etc. So it's always the last file is always the, the right one. Um, there's no, you know, copy this dependency here or there or things like that. Uh, so this is quite nice to know that you always have this uh, yeah, this single source of truth, basically. Uh, it, it also helps for things like dependencies, um, because you won't depend, oh, I think I've got, yeah, this, this, this slide there. Uh, because uh, you always depend on the very last uh, project or dependency, and uh, you don't have different dependencies, so perhaps it works with dependency D1, but not with D2. No, you don't have this problem uh, with that model. Uh, also, the way, uh, it works, uh, although it's a huge repository, uh, changes are atomic. So when you do things like the, the, the using Rosie, the, the big refactorings, uh, it's done uh, atomic, uh, atomically across the whole code base, uh, which is a big, large scale, or large scale one. Uh, it's also great for when you want to refactor things around. That's what I mentioned already. So, for example, you, are, you want to adapt the, the new Java 8 features, the new C++ 11 features, so you can uh, refactor the code base and progressively add the, the new enhancements. But there are also some downsides, uh, because to support that scale, to support those workflows, uh, there's a big investment made in tooling. So the, all the tools that I mentioned had to be uh, developed somehow. There's a real team behind that, so it's not every company that can do that and has got the budget for that. And uh, I mean, having you know, you know, your own tools, etc., uh, might be somehow at risk uh, in terms of productivity. But also code health is super important. Uh, although we've got the auto rollback features and so on, uh, still uh, that's uh, critical uh, to ensure that uh, you, you, you don't wreak havoc into the, the, the code base of others. Uh, the code base complexity, um, so it's very easy to add dependencies to some other projects. So I remember doing a kind of simple Hello World exercise where I started to somehow transitively depend on the self-driving car code base. I don't know how it came into my code somehow, although there was clearly nothing related to that. 
Um, so yeah, the code health uh, enhancements and the investment is very important. That's what I said already. And yeah, in conclusion, uh, so this is actually possible to do a monolithic repository, uh, even at that scale, uh, because Google, but others, uh, I think Facebook is doing that as well. There are other organizations uh, doing uh, that. So it scales up to a billion of files, millions of commits, uh, but you really have to invest heavily uh, on tooling, on scalability, etc. So it works, but it's not uh, that easy. But it's very, very nice and interesting to think that, okay, whenever I want, I can look at things like the Gmail code base or whatever. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot for your attention. And I'm over time.